Mind, body, and spirit. These are three things I consistently look at to find out how I can improve them. How can I make my mind stronger? How can I build a better mindset? How can I take care of my body? And what can I do to make my spirit elevate? Today, we're going to talk about what I'm doing right now to help with two of those three. My goal is to help to help restaurant owners finally get to where they want to go. But more than that, my goal is to find entrepreneurs within that segment that actually know what it means to hustle. That's my goal. Come on the journey with me. Restaurant Marketing Secrets, episode 697. And today's podcast is not about restaurant marketing secrets. It's about a secret for unlocking a better you. You as an entrepreneur... It is your job to lead your team. And I think one thing that a lot of us do incorrectly, including myself, is we don't lead by example. I talked about this in day 127 of the puzzle, my daily blog that I posted two days ago. Talked about my five-day fast that I'm doing right now and why I'm doing it. And I'm going to get into that. But before I get into that, I want to get into mind, body, and spirit. It's something I came up with a while back that I said, Matt, what if... You could become unbreakable in mind, body, and spirit. Obviously, it's not achievable. I'm not Superman, and Superman even had kryptonite. But one thing I struggle with is the mind. I have good days. I have bad days, just like you. I had two bad days this week, and I let little things affect my mentality the rest of the day, and I know for a fact that it affects the people around me sometimes. In fact, last Wednesday, we were at dinner for my 25th wedding anniversary, my wife, myself, my son, and my daughter, and my wife gave me a look. And I said, what? She's like, you going to get in a good mood? And I'm like, oh, I, I didn't realize what I was thinking about because there were some problems in my mind. I hadn't locked away, was reflecting on the family. And they all said, yeah, we can tell you're in a bad mood. There's something wrong. I'm like, okay. So I kind of did a reset and we went on our way and I fixed it. So mind is a huge part. Body, obviously. And in the restaurant space, it's probably one of the spaces I think is ignoring the body more than any. Because you have so many indulgences around you. You have food and drinks around you all the time. You have an easier path to not eating correctly. And you work your ass off all day long. And so the gym becomes an afterthought. So that's a big thing. And then spirit. You know, spirit to me is just being a better person. Like I've got on my desk a cup holder my wife gave me on my birthday. And it's a little wooden cup holder. And it says... Try not to be a dick today. <laughs> and it's the truth. Because as entrepreneurs, we run hard and fast. We take a lot of abuse. And sometimes we extend that abuse to other people. And so for me, I'm trying to always be a better person and, and have a better aura around myself. But today I want to talk about mind and body. I'm in the middle of a five-day fast. I'm actually on day five right now. I started, no, hold on, I lied. I'm on day four still. I started Sunday around noon. And I haven't eaten since then. I've had water, coffee, about 10 sticks of sugar-free gum, some salt water, and some electrolytes. And tomorrow around noon, I will have a protein shake. And then at 1 o'clock, I will eat some steak and ribs because you want to come out of a, a fast lightly with a protein shake, something like that. They just you know kind of jumpstart your stomach. And then you want to have some protein. And I'm grilling steaks and ribs for the office for about 35 people tomorrow. So it's going to be kind of tortured for about an hour and a half and be making ribs, which I love. And then for about 30 minutes, making about 20 steaks. And I'm going to be looking at what I haven't eaten the last week, last five days. So why am I fasting is the question today. And how does that affect my mind and my body? Well, number one, I think we all could agree that none of us don't want to eat for five days. Better yet, eat for a day. There is a part of your brain that research has shown gets bigger and better. When you do stuff you don't want to do, stuff you don't like to do. Sunday night, I'm in the pool at 530. And that day we had moved my daughter into college. And I didn't go on my normal Sunday morning run where I run this hill a couple miles. And it's a tough run, especially when it's hot. So I'm sitting there and I've got all these excuses why I didn't do my Sunday run. Like, and I'm questioning myself, I'm like, Matt, you could have run Monday through Saturday because I do it every week. And I didn't. And I didn't realize we were moving page in the college at that time. And I'm sitting there thinking like, okay, well, it's one week. I missed it. I'm like, no, you're getting out of the pool. You're driving 15 minutes down the Covington. You're running the damn hill. And I did. 
I didn't want to do it, but I forced myself to do it. Well, just like the fast. There's none of us that want to fast for one day, better yet, five days. And I've got friends that do seven to 14 day fast. I haven't gotten that point yet. Like, I'm not hungry right now, but I want to eat. So I've got, as I'm recording this podcast, it's 11 a.m. on Thursday, August 15th. I've got till noon tomorrow. So I've got 25 hours left till I get to enjoy a better blend, blend protein shake. Cannot wait. I don't know if I'm going to go with cookies and cr- the cookie, what do they call it? Cookie dough, chocolate chip cookie dough. Or if I'm going to go with the brownie batter, which is one of my faves. I haven't decided yet, but I'm going to go with one of those two. But I did this fast for a couple reasons. Number one, I don't want to do it. And it's going to instill that part of my brain that I'm doing something. And granted, I'm not a scientist, but I know it works. I've heard about it and I've seen the research. So there we go. But number two, I also want to, I want to show my team what's out there and what they could be doing differently. I want my team to realize that I'm not just preaching about being healthier, that I'm doing it. Because the biggest medical part of the fast is the fact that it rids your body of a lot of cancerous cells. It resets a lot of things within your your gut and your palate. By the way, if you haven't done it before, the first meal afterwards is like, uh uh-huh. Like we went to a Mexican restaurant. So I like, I had a protein shake which tasted unbelievable. And I'm like, I don't know if it's because of the fast or if this person made this better blend shake, the greatest blend ever. It was because of the fast. Granted, their blends are unbelievable, but this one was just ungodly. Well, then that night we went to a Mexican restaurant because that was, I guess that was my first one in first quarter. I'm doing them every quarter. So this is obviously my third fast of the year. But that first one actually ended at like five or six o'clock on a Friday night. So I had my blend and then we drove to a Mexican restaurant. And I had their chips and salsa, and then I had a steak fajita. It's called their Flaming Hot one. It's a spicy steak and shrimp fajita. It's unbelievable. It's called Mi Cozumel. It's up in Norwood, Ohio, or Oakley, Ohio. And I thought, man, this is the greatest meal ever created. If, in fact, it is a good meal, but the fast just made it so much better. So it resets your taste buds. It resets your, your body Uh, There's a lot of research with regards to the ketosis that your body goes into, which is where your body feeds off of stored energy and fat. A lot of us don't realize that we have about 100,000 calories stored in our body at any time. And so if you need 2,000 calories to get through the day, like I've worked out Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and last night, I'm not going to work out tonight, but I did bring my gym bag in case I'm in that mood, but I probably won't. But I probably need 3,000 calories based on my workouts the last four days. And so I burned, let's say, 12,000 calories. And I took in with my electrolyte drinks and the gum and the coffee, I've probably taken it under 100 in four days. So there's you know, 3,000 I've burned over four days. There's 12,000 calories. Assuming it happens one more day, that's 15,000 calories. I've only depleted 15,000 calories of the 100,000 calories my body has stored. And so it's not a big deal with regards to what you can and can't do, but... It allows your body to burn stored fat. There's research that it does something to the effect of like 70% of the cancer cells it gets rid of because it, it, it kills them. So there's a bunch of fancy dance, fancy stuff you can look up on Google. But that's a big part of it. And then to me, it also just instills discipline that I'm willing and able to do something I sure as hell don't want to do. And I'm also able to project to my team and say, look, we all only get one body. And if you're me leading a company, my company needs to take care of themselves. The healthier my employees are, the better they are. And my employees, the healthier they are and the more they do that's right, their kids see it. Their spouse sees it. That if you're doing the wrong shit, they're probably going to do it. And it's going to lead to worse consequences to them later in life. And so there's a lot of reasons that you should be doing this as well. So today's podcast, Mind, Body, and Spirit, Mind and Body. Force yourself to do something you sure as hell don't want to do, a.k.a. not eat for five days. And then body, do something that's going to help your body and at the same time project to your team. Because as a leader, it is your job to lead the people around you. And there's a lot of things we all do that do not lead those people into the right place. That's all I got. Talk to you tomorrow.